This problem is about Doppler effect. A person stands at the side of a straight railway track. A train moves towards the person and emits a sound from its whistle. The person hears a sound of frequency 1690 hertz as the train approaches him. The person then hears sounds sound of frequency 1500 hertz as the train moves away from him. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. What is the speed of the train? This is the data table with the information given this problem. So translating words into data. The person or the observer stands at the side of a rail track. So its speed is zero. The train emits a sound from its whistle. So that is the speed of the sound source. The person hears a sound of frequency of 1690 when the train approaches. So that is the frequency detected by the observer when the train is moving toward. And this is the frequency detected by the observer when the train is moving away. And this is the speed of air, which is, I mean, let me rephrase the last one. This is the speed of sound in the air, which is 340 meters per second. And note here, it's important to include the speed of the air because the air is the median that is going to propagate the sound wave. This is a Doppler effect formula. I have two FOs, two frequencies. I do not have the frequency emitted by the train. I do have the speed of the sound in the air. And that is what I need to find, the speed of the sound source. I do not have this frequency. So for this equation, I cannot calculate the speed of sound, um, of the sound source, because I don't know this and I don't know this. But I can set up two equations with the information that I have and see what can I do after that. I set up my Doppler effect formula when the train is approaching the observer and when the train is going away from the observer. The only difference between both equations is the frequency um, detected by the observer is approaching is this value and is going away is this value. Now the sign is missing. So when the sound source is approaching the observer, so we use a plus sign. When the sound source is moving away from the observer, use the negative sign. The question is, what both equations have in common? So in this picture is kind of showing the transition from the train passing by the observer before and after. This is the stationary train sound source. And this is a moving sound source with the, in this direction. Is stationary moving to the right or moving to the left. The speed of the sound emitted by the source is the same. The frequency emitted by the source is also the same, which means PS is the same and FS is the same. I'm going to use this information to rearrange my formulas. To determine the sign of the, the speed of the source, if the source is moving toward the observer, so make the speed of the sound source negative. If the source is moving away from the observer, 
make the speed of the sound source positive. My next step is to rearrange both formulas in terms of the frequency of the sound source. So I need to define the sign on the denominator of this equation. So <clears throat> the sign that go before Vs is based on if the source is moving toward or away from the observer. So if it's approaching, which means moving toward the observer, so this is negative. And this one is going away, so that is positive. So now in this step, I divide both equations by Fs. So this over Fs, this over Fs. So cancel. And I do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to do a cross multiplication um, on this step. So it will be 340 Fs is equal to... 1,690 um, times this with the negative. And the likewise on the other side is the same. So you multiply 1,500 by this portion right here and this you multiply by this. This is called cross, cross multiplication. You can do this. Um, so it's an easy way to solve equations that have fractions on both sides. Now, if this equation, in this one, I have this, this side of the equation equal to the other side of the equation. Likewise here. But this value and this value are the same. So, which means if this is equal to this, I can say, I can state that this is equal to this. So, that way I eliminate my Fs from this equation. So now I have this here on this side of the equation and I have this on the side of this equation. So I just do multiplication now um, and I'm going to display the result here. 1690 times 340 is 574 Six zero zero minus one six nine zero VS, and on the other side is times three forty is five one one two three four plus VS. Actually, a correction here one thousand five hundred times VS. Now I'm going to group. Um, on the first side of the equation, I'm going to group my Vs and my numbers I'm going to throw on the other side of the equation. So this is my Vs, this one is negative, this one is stay, and this one now is negative. This is negative 3190 Vs equal to 57, 4, 6, 0, 0, minus 5, 1. Negative, because this is greater, 6, 4, 6, 0, 0. I'm going to make this number negative. Divided by 3, 1, 9, 0, also negative. So my answer is 20.25 20 meters per second. So my Vs is 20.25 20 meters per second. So that's the speed of the train. So the options, the best answer to this question is 20 meters per second. To answer this question, you need to understand the dynamics involved with Doppler effect, all the variables. And uh, very easily, we could, uh, if you don't understand <clears throat> how the frequency of the observer will change, when the train approaches and moves away. So probably um, you'll be easily confused with one of those frequency will be the frequency of the source or of the sound source. So it doesn't work like this. So you have to be careful when you read all these, dissect all the question, make a data table is getting a little bit confusing 
and uh, also remember the signs this is really important and understand that the frequency of the sound source is constant the entire time and what is change is the frequency the observer will listen or the pitch uh, because the relative motion of the train with the observer this portion here is just rearranging or to solve the problem using algebra and uh, yeah i think this is a pretty uh, long type of answer for a multiple choice question but if you already have an idea how to answer this and hopefully this video will be helpful to you um, so that is the sequence